Here's how to survive a hippo. You attack. don't. No, you're not going to. And if yeah, but I I'm gonna say it as an honorary Viltrumite. That's the neat thing. You don't. You don't. 28 years, ladies and gentlemen. It's been 28 good years since I've been subscribed to Earth Prime's Homo Sapien update, and it's been freaking great. Not just being on the top of the food chain, but also just trying to uphold the terms of services. One amongst which is not to square up with animals that uh, look at you funny, because you'll never get anything good out of that, beside cats. You, you gotta do that with cats because they're freaking confused. They don't know what they want. Now, that being said though, it's always a good thing to refresh the dump of services because sometimes it tends to be a little bit unclear. What are you supposed to do when you're facing a bear? What happens when you are seeing a kangaroo that's flexing in front of you like this beautiful specimen that I'm staring at here in the thumbnail? My god, I, I, I respect the kangaroo grind. But for this, we have Casual Geographics here to tell us what to do so that we don't get unsubscribed from life. So <laughs> let's jump into this. Oh no! <laughs> She's fine, I swear, lol. Uh, I really hope so. So if you're a long time subscriber, there's a couple of videos that might have brought you here. One Good of them nature. might be the very first video I ever made. It's still up today, but considering it was a TikTok compilation I slapped together and it was back when I used Apple headphones as a mic, the quality is trash. In fact, oh. watching that video nearly made me cringe myself into a hernia, and in all honesty, if the views didn't go crazy, I definitely would have vaulted it like nature did the dinosaurs. Or the Bundy Hornets, whatever happened to them? Well, with the recent upgrade in the production quality of my channel, I figured, why not remake the video that probably got you here in the first place? Oh. So here's how to survive a moose attack. You don't, actually. Have a well, that was shut down pretty quick, but yeah. Uh, so I Fully understandable. A moose shedding its antlers is one of the most metal things that I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of metal things. <laughs> you in the metal pipe sound. <laughs> a choice in the matter. You see, the key word here is attack. The road to getting a moose aggravated often comes with a toll price of your life. And honestly, you're probably safer in front of a bear than a 10 foot tank with antlers. I've seen this one. It's the guy who was yelling to his mom, right? Wasn't it in Canada? Like, mom, the moose fighting in the front yard. With predators, you can convince them that you're not worth the effort. But there is no negotiating with something that thinks you're actively trying to turn it into oh calories. My God. So the best way to survive a moose attack is to not even let it get to that point. So here are some signs that a moose is considering turning you from one of a kind to another in a pine. If a moose stops eating or drinking and suddenly stares at you. You got the moose's attention and it's in your life's interest to give it back. If a moose shows you the whites <laughs> of his eyes, soon you'll be seeing the sight of God's skies. And if the ears are pinned back, his mind's on attack. And this go That's like every animal's, right? Oh my god, the fucking horse. Ugh. But yeah, basically any animal that tends to tilt their ears back it means that they want to square up. And especially with cats. Because they have like indicators behind them. But yeah, basically once the ears start getting aerodynamic, it means that they send you on the stairways to heaven. It goes for pretty much all animals. Once the ears go flat, then the next few seconds are going to be very crucial to continuing your way of life. And I don't entirely know why, but if a moose urinates while looking at you, it's a sign of ill intent. I'm guessing it's like a territorial thing, but wherever you came from is where you need to be heading. And if a moose lowers his head and starts approaching you, that is likely okay. the last warning that doesn't come with a hospital bill. Of course, none of that really matters because a four-legged armored truck with the ability to make conscious choices could just choose to charge you on provoked because there is uh, okay please keep kids away from these massive things they are no fucking joke like listen a fun little anecdote about uh, what theodore roosevelt will call a moose's uh my little sister practiced like four or five years of equitation horseback riding and one day one specific day after a meet I went over there to like cheer her up and everything and I was supposed to be taking care of the horse that they had at the stable. Once she, she was like done cleaning it, she had to go and pick up her stuff so she said she could we could go home. And the horse, like I, I, I held it for like a fraction of a second. Once she turned her back, the bloody thing stepped on my toes stared me in the eye and i swear to god he must have said something like what you gonna do nigga <laughs> he didn't say it up front but that was the energy that he was channeling that thing scared the shit out of me and not only that it's weight the pressure onto my freaking toes like i still find horses to be majestic like my daughter is like a magnet to them she's like a disney princess i suppose but i will not 
fuck with any of them. There's no playbook in nature that the Musai is gonna follow. At which point your options are limited, but you're gonna want to get into a car, a shed, or a building, or at the very least put something between you and the moose, like a tree. He went for seconds. Tree or even a mailbox or something. And if violence is inevitable, you're gonna want to curl into a ball, protect your vital organs, and forgive those who may have wronged you in the past, so the hate in your heart doesn't weigh you down as you go to the clouds. But most importantly. Don't get up right after the moose stops trampling you, because that could motivate the moose to star in the sequel of your assault. Basically, oh. the whole make yourself look bigger thing. Yeah, yeah, do the exact opposite with a moose. Don't stay. Wait a minute. What is this unit? What the hell is this? What happened to the myostatin here? Wow. <laughs> It ate all the creatine. Sit with a moose. Don't stand your ground because at the moment it's not yours. You're dealing with the Lord of the North, and nothing short of a magazine with no words or a freed willy is stopping him. You can expect more than 10% off when a moose is involved, especially when it's a mother with a calf or a male in rut. And for those of you that already know what rutting is, I'm 90% <laughs> sure I know how you know, and I'm 90% disappointed in you. However, the moose usually <laughs> isn't trying to hurt you, so the less of a threat you are, the less danger you're in. Can't really say that for these guys, though. Here's how to survive a chimp attack. Yeah, you funny don't. thing about that. Either you don't or you wish you didn't. Look, if you already follow me, then you already know what chimps are and what they're capable of. One word. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I'm pretty sure that most of you are thinking the same thing as I am, Travis the Chimp. But like some years ago, I think that I had forgotten about it until I watched Jordan Peele's Nope. And I was like, right, great. Now that memory comes flooding back. People think they're cute because they look like humans when they should be scared because they act like them too. I actually have a list on how to survive a chimp attack, but if you're in a position where you can get touched up by one, then you've already ignored steps one through five. Step six yeah. is to lease a coffin. But let's say you effed around and now you're trying not to find out. Don't smile or show teeth since this can be interpreted as a sign of aggression. It's yeah. their version of flashing your piece. Eye contact with a chimp is a good way to make contact with your ancestor, since this can be directly seen as a challenge. <laughs> However, if a chimp is already coming at you with violence, then it might be time to pick a color for your casket. There is. I mean, he's not wrong. It's like a we have a common ancestor, but yeah, sure. One weakness chimps have that might just save you. Because chimpanzees are built like Michelangelo statues, their relatively low body fat and top-heavy body composition means. Chimps can't really swim, so if you uh -oh. happen to be near a body of water, diving into the deep end where a chimp can't follow you Maybe? might be the only thing that saves you. Now here's a video of a chimp doing exactly what I just said they couldn't. So I guess the real advice here is be an organ donor, because at least whatever they find left of you can go on to benefit someone else, because it's not yeah. like you're going to need it. Now let's talk about bears. You've probably heard the popular rhyme for bear safety, and that's if it's black, fight back, if it's yeah. brown, get on the ground, and if it's white like a cloud, you're gonna You're die. Dead. But there are some misconceptions with this, and some of those misconceptions could get you put on a shirt, so we're gonna talk about it bear by bear. With black bears, you're gonna wanna fight back. But that doesn't mean just start throwing hands at the bear, because a bear of any kind is folding any man like Sunday laundry. But what you Yeah, mean, those are the smallest ones, right? Brown bears, then we're starting to we're starting to get into revenant territory. But like oof, damn. Well, the chances of you encountering a polar bear is very small, unless you are in a zoo. But one of the worst myths that you should never listen to is that bears don't eat humans. That they only care about a certain specific food within the, the, the like casual meals. No, no. Bears eat anything that they can get their hands on. Pause. Pause on. But what you want to do is make yourself look like a threat. Stand up tall, talk loud and firmly, and if you have a bag or a jacket or something, <laughs> raise it over your head to make yourself look bigger. Black yeah. bears seem to constantly forget who they are and instead choose to identify as overweight raccoons, so they can be intimidating. <laughs> Now with brown bears, you're gonna want to get on the ground, but not for the reason some people might tell you. Some people say to play dead, since bears don't like to eat prey that's already past tense. Bears will eat literally anything, including yeah. other baby bears, so they're not about to miss out on free protein just because the expiration date might be over. Oh, they cannibalize too. Bears aren't stupid. You see, playing possum works for possums because they're not playing. They actually pass out and go into a panic coma where no amount of pushing or prodding wakes them up. Also, they'll drool and release a foul smell to really sick. Uh. So unless you plan on committing to the role that hard, it's not gonna help you. Why you actually get on the ground is to look as unintimidating and non-threatening as possible. So basically, none of the things you do with a black bear. You're gonna wanna lay down, clasp your hands around your neck, and then spread your legs to make it harder to flip you over. Look at that. The important thing, and I cannot stress this enough, do not run. A bear can keep pace with a horse over a short distance, so yeah. all running does is guarantee you get made into a memory sooner. Especially since <laughs> bears are the largest terrestrial predators on the planet while also having the endurance of a CrossFit junkie. And sometimes the bear will test their instincts by charging. 
Most charges, however, are uh, fake outs. And the worst thing you can do for your health is due to a race with a homicide case with pause. Also, whoever said bears can't run downhill was actively trying to sell the human race. Yes, they can and thinking they can't will be your downfall. But the best way to survive a bear attack is to avoid one in the first place. So if you're ever hiking in bear country, you're actually going to want to make noise, which sounds counterintuitive, but making a lot of yeah, noise actually tells the bear where you are they and identify allows you to avoid conflict in the first place. Also, since bears have a hypersensitive nose and sense of smell, carrying bear spray can be the difference between going home in peace and resting there in pieces. Every gym bro will survive this. At least anybody who's going for PR at the gym always carry some ammonia with you. <laughs> It would kill a bear. Bear spray is said to save people from serious injury and bear encounters 98% of the time. God bless you if you're in that 2%. There is a catch though. Everything I just said applies to territorial encounters with bears. If a bear comes at you on predatory timing, then my only advice is to make peace with the higher being of your choosing. Predatory bear attacks on humans are rare, but when they do happen, someone gets put on the news. And that's Ooh. why if the bear in your presence is a polar bear, then it's up. Yeah. By it, I mean your time on Earth. Polar bears are hyper carnivores, so while other bears are omnivorous, polar bears are all meat all the time. And since polar bears can smell their next meal from an area code away, by the time you see him, just know he's been plotting on you. Dude, we, there was some footage I once saw, like in a documentary, up there, up, <laughs> up there, like it's like just a neighborhood in the next town, but like in Greenland. We, well, not that far, where um, polar bears were hunting seals. Man, they are like orcas. There is one tip that says polar bears have ADHD, and undressing and tossing articles of clothing will distract it long enough for you to escape. But unless you have like an unlocked car or a bear proof house, <laughs> all you've done is guarantee that you now die naked and cold. And if the bear somehow doesn't get you, whoever finds your body gets to see exactly how your life ended. Now, half the reason I work out is so that if I ever suffer an untimely death, then I can leave behind a respectable corpse. But considering this is probably True. happening in the ice-chilled Arctic, they probably just assume I was compensating for something. <laughs> Dude, I want to be immortalized like Pickle from Bucky, just <laughs> looking like a caveman <laughs> stuck in the ice. If you know, you know, the guys sure do. But yeah, if it's black, fight back. If it's brown, you better hug the ground. And if it's white like nose powder, then it finna be your final hour. And speaking of final hour, here's how to survive a hippo You attack. don't. No, you're not going to. And if yeah, but I I'm gonna say it as an honorary Viltrumite. That's the neat thing. You don't. don't. Like, hippos are pound for pound like the fat dude that you find at the gym who apparently picked in high school, but was the quarterback and was very, very much into powerlifting. Just because the rest between his sets looks like it's going to take two hours doesn't mean that he can end you. If you're disappointed by that, then that's a failure of your own expectations. And considering we're like halfway through the video, if you click genuinely looking for hippo advice, and I'm assuming you're watching this from God's data plan. Hippos <laughs> are the heaviest things on four legs without a trunk or a horn. They divide crocodiles without a calculator and subtract an estimated 500 people from the population a year. And if we're being honest, it's probably higher. Yeah. Show me someone who survived a hippo attack and I'll show you someone you should get lottery numbers from. Oof. So my only advice to survive in this whale Karen throwing a fit is to uninstall yourself so he doesn't get credit for the kill. Unless you're exercising the right to bear Oof. absolute heat, in which case I hope he likes seafood because he finna eat some shells. Then again, since hippos are as close as you can get to being bulletproof, Self-deletion might be the easiest way out. Yeah. Ironically, in this entire video, the cougar might be the most survivable out of any animal here. Sure. The rules for surviving a cougar are pretty simple. Try to travel in groups, avoid Cost being them. out at dawn or dusk, and if one tries to offer you a drink, just remember nothing in this life is free. Now, when surviving <laughs> the actual cats, the rules... Fair. 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 ...rules are a little different. You see, cougars are actually naturally wary of people and are perfectly happy avoiding humans. So if a puma ever presses you like in this video, it's likely you accidentally stumbled into some cubs and now you gotta see the mama about it. Back away slowly. All running does is tell the cougar that you're something worth chasing. Also, yeah. with ambush hunters, the worst thing you can do when a cat confronts you is turn your back to it, because that makes it more likely to pounce. You're yeah. going to want to stand up tall and back away slowly while speaking in a loud, firm voice. It doesn't matter what you say. You can recite the entire script for the B movie. They don't understand it. For the cougar to hear you. No, you sh dude. I'm trying to attack me, right? Look away from you, dude. What do you want me to do? Come on. This sucks. You can also <laughs> throw things not at, but near the cougar. However, if you crouch down to pick something up or take your eyes off the cougar, then you've broken two rules in one move. Just keep moonwalking and understand that if the cougar wanted you off the census, you'd already be trending on Twitter. This advice pretty much applies for big cats too. However, yeah. if you find yourself staring down a line, first of all, it probably took a lot of bad life decisions. No. 
<laughs> Look, a lion will come near you, tap you on the shoulder and be like, do you realize how fucked you are? <laughs> they don't fuck around. Just to end up there and it's likely your fault. But pay attention to its tail. If it's swaying from side to side, that means the lion feels threatened, which is yeah. good because that means it can still be negotiated with. But if the tail's rigid and not moving at all, then it's likely a predatory encounter, in which case the only thing up for negotiation will be the cost of your casket. In tiger <laughs> country, it's often advised to wear a backwards mask to convince the ambushing big cat that it's already lost the element of surprise. Yeah. With tiger attacks on the rise, it's likely the striped demons are calling the bluff. Bluffing's probably your only option against a kangaroo. <laughs> like with the moose and the brown bear, your goal is to convince the steroid rabbit that you're as little of a threat as possible and you do that by avoiding eye contact and not facing a macropod directly and if a kangaroo starts putting the paws on you you're gonna want to curl into a ball take the hits and pray because if the kangaroo hauls off and kicks you you're probably not getting back up but if yeah you i remember the footage of the guy who was trying to save his dog i did not was trying he managed to save his dog by punching a kangaroo pretty hard like even the kangaroo was like what just happened? Want a kangaroo cheat code? Lower your head, keep your hands close to your body, and cough. A deep cough is similar to the sound weaker males make to submit to a bigger, stronger alpha root. It's ah. basically giving the kangaroo the right of way. As you can see, this woman failed to cough and now she's coughing up a kidney. So I guess with kangaroos, you have two choices. You can either have a coughing fit or be fit in a coffin. But you don't have options when you're dealing with the most dangerous animal humanity's ever seen. Humans. And that's because it's humanity itself. So if you ever happen to wake up and find that you're a wild animal, here's how to survive a human attack. Of course, we're on the top of the food chain, baby. The only one who can kill you is you. Sounds like a David Goggins uh, quote. First is to understand that you are likely screwed and any outcome that doesn't end in one less of you likely will end in something worse and the sooner you can accept that, the sooner you can be at peace. Now humans may look like the light work of the great ape group, being significantly weaker than orangutans, gorillas and chimps, but mm -hmm. they make up for it. The same way that bullied kid makes a tools. Of with a suspiciously shaped duffel bag and the intent of lighting up the school like a Christmas tree. You can try to run, but the homo sapien race used to literally chase their prey into heat strokes since they're able to sweat and cool down while actively running you into the ground. Yeah. Of course, that's when they hunted with spears. Now they use their father's boomstick to blow you off the senses, while still being too far for you to add any input to the matter. Make no mistake, without claws, venom, or a strong bite force, an unarmed human might seem like an easy W. Until you realize that humans work as a massive monkey mafia, where if you hurt or murk one of their own, they exterminate your entire family. Uh. And honestly, that's the nicest thing they'll do. Because the other option involves being captured and taken as a spectacle in their society, where they will imprison you. Oh, God, I hate circuses. Like, literally, the only type of circus that I'm okay with, like Cirque du Soleil, where it's like mostly, I think it's all human performance only, but like, the rest of it, Whenever I see them employ animals, I feel so bad. Break you down and punish you for being yourself, just like high school. But the worst part of it all, when the deuces hit the fan and someone gets put on a shirt, they'll blame you for being what you've always been. There he is. There's the boy. They'll slaughter hundreds of millions of your kind and then gaslight you to convince themselves that you're the problem. All while actively destroying the natural order that existed billions of years before them. Because humans aren't God, but they sure love to play it. So the only way to survive a human attack is to readjust your goals and just enjoy the show before a hairless oppression monkey with a superiority complex comes by and cancels it. But that's going to do it for this video. For more consistent content, be sure to follow my Instagram and TikTok. I try to post daily on both. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my new book on 100 deadly animals that can RSVP your place in a cemetery. And if you'd like <laughs> to support this channel beyond just subscribing, my Patreon's also going to be in the description. But other than that, drink water, hug your mother, and be safe out there. Because the only thing more of a menace than the animal behind the cage is the one outside it. So yeah, basically the lesson of the story is don't add any of those foolish features in your subscription service and you'll be a-okay. But guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, please do go and subscribe to Casual Geographics, an awesome channel. I love this so much. I I'm so happy that this was recommended to me. and I'm continuing to watch more of this. That said though, we should all have a wonderful evening. See you guys in the next one. Bye.